Hi guys and welcome back to episode 3 in this tower defence tutorial in Godot. Thank you for coming on back, really appreciate your perseverance and I hope you're enjoying the series so far. Uh, today we're going to talk about a couple of key concepts. We're going to talk about the singleton class and how that's implemented in Godot, which is slightly different to the, the way other languages may implement it, as well as resources, which are a, a type of uh, object in Godot that can be used to store uh, data values and uh, perhaps use some implementation, but we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later on. They're both, both very, very powerful uh, and but kind of key to the way Godot works. And it's not going to actually change the way the game looks right now, particularly at all. Um, but what it will do is it will allow us uh, a lot more flexibility as we proceed to actually code this in a, in a meaningful and sensible way. So, so before we go ahead with that, though, I just want to say, look, I, I can't believe how well this channel's been received and some of the wonderful feedback i've been getting as well as the subscribers that have been coming through absolutely fantastic so thank you so much does mean a lot does help does help the channel gives me motivated to keep <laughs> keep on rolling you know keep keep it honest so so thank you so much for that some of the feedback's been great i mean this um for instance this chap here captain ufo uh 4587 says well what instead of adding a pre-made loop you allow the path generation to choose back as a valid direction so what i think he's referring to here is is the ability to uh, create a path or perhaps a loop, and then have that loop go on a walk of its own. And I think that's rather smart. I've obviously only just done these kind of small loops, but potentially that loop could have carried on a little bit further up here, could have gone round there and back again. Uh, well, I was just going to go up one, couldn't it, and then back and then down. But you know, you can you get the idea, right? That you could have had a loop that goes a lot further and perhaps just goes on a random walk and then comes back to where it started. That would be so cool. But I think to do that would be challenging. But we have the add loops function, so we can maybe get, you know, use that and, and get a bit more creative. But for now, we're not going to do that. <laughs> uh, perhaps we'll do that towards the end, or perhaps I'll leave that as a uh, as a little exercise for you to enjoy uh, on your own. <laughs> so let's get started. Let's talk about singletons first of all. What is a singleton? Well, um, it's a, it's a common pattern used in in a lot of programming languages, mostly object oriented programming languages. And what it's meant to signify is, I think this actual sentence sums it up really well. In software engineering. The singleton pattern is a software design pattern that restricts the instantiation of a class to a singular instance. Now, for those that have been following the channel and the series so far, you'll spot that occasionally we do this thing called a, uh, we will create a new instance of an object. Well, the singleton pattern, you can only create it once. Um, and the way that that works is a sort of diagram over here, if you understand your UML diagrams. What that's saying is there, that negative is saying that the constructor is actually um i'm not sure if that's the constructor or that's the constructor anyway you know that's that's the reference isn't it that's the constructor it's saying that it's private so you cannot um actually run a new on this um on, on a singleton class uh, so what you rather do is you call get instance and then what that does is say well does an instance already exist if not i'll create the new one and return that otherwise i'll return the one that, you, that I've created previously. That way you only ever get one instance. It's very useful for things that you don't want, uh, you, you know, they're very, very specific and that you wouldn't want multiple instances of. Uh, and in our case, uh, the path generator is a very, very good example of that, where we're only gonna have one path generator um, and we, we only just really need to access it, you know, in, in the one instance of it. So, where this gives us some power now, if we think about this, is, well, why would we do this? Well, the path itself is going to be needed by quite a few things. Uh, we know it's needed by the main script in order to lay down the tiles, but the enemy is going to need access to that path as well in order to know where it's going. Um, now, we could do what we could actually, when we create the uh, enemies, we could create uh, a reference to the path and pass that through to that instance of the enemy. That's quite a common thing to do. You'll see that, but what you end up quite often getting a sort of referential hell, where you're not sure which way you passed it, whether you you're passing it directly to the instance, whether that instance is checking up the parent. Or it, it gets a little bit messy. So, a really good way to do this would be to create a singleton pattern, get the things that need uh, access to it, direct access to the singleton, and then they can do with it as they please. Makes some sense, right? But we're going to need to make some changes. We've got to do some things to get this to work. And I've already been, I've already started. We've got a bit of a way to go. One of the things about a singleton in Godot is that it needs to be part of the scene tree. So for those that may remember, the originally this is this just extended object, but now we need it to extend node. That did create a slight problem in that I found that I had a method called get path, 
Now, get path is actually already a method in um, the Node class, so I had to rename that. And I've, I've, hopefully, I've, I've named this a little bit more clearly now. So you've got get path root, which returns the array of vectors for the actual full path, and then get path tile, which then returns a specific index of that tile. And um, then I had to update a whole bunch of things in main because obviously that was that was referencing it in all different places. Um, now, one thing, another thing that we might just want to think about is we've got this underscore PG path generator here. That's not going to be needed anymore because we're going to be using the inst uh, the instance of it. Uh, and things like this dot new here is not going to work under our new regime, or at least you know it's not what we want to do under our new regime. Um, nor in the path class here do we really want the path to be. Um, a private variable with this underscore in front so we might we might just want to start thinking about doing something like that but that in itself is going to be a bit of a problem so maybe we need to just think about renaming that to path root i'll go through all these things i might just tweak a little bit maybe pause it so you don't have to go through me changing variable names uh, I'll, I'll, I'll always make the source code available at the end of the um, episode so you can download that and have a play around with it yourself okay so We've done a few things, and what I'd like to now do is actually be able to say, well, let's create this, let's make it now so that this auto loads, and we don't know, we no longer need to um, uh, create the instance of it in here. So we've got some more, we've got some work to do. Uh, like I said, oh, extended node now. So what we can actually do over here is go to our project project settings, and under auto load here, it usually starts on general. So if you click on auto load here, you've got the option here to uh, auto load scripts. So if we click on here and then go to our scripts folder, path generator, uh, we the node name itself. This is this is important, right? And we need to think about this. This is what the singleton is going to be called. We don't want to call it path generator because that's the name of the class. So that'd be confusing. So we might call it path gen instance. That seems to make reasonable sense. And then we'll click on add. And you'll see that it's got this global variables enable here. And I think what that does is that says, well, now I can access the um, the variables inside of it. I don't quite know uh, what you, why you would want to do that any other way. Um, perhaps you just want to auto load it to get to, to do something that you don't want people to reference. We don't want that. We want full access to this. So now if we click on close, this is going to load up straight away. So that's a good start. But now we've got a slight problem. The main method was the thing that was calling the new new here. That's not going to work anymore under our new our new policy, right? Because we're saying, well, we don't want this to create new. We the auto load's going to do that for us. So how's it going to know information like all of this stuff here? And that's what brings us on to resources. We want to have a resource that's got all of this information in it so that the path generator can use it. We're not going to pass that by reference anymore. We're not in, in the constructor. We're going to pass this, we're going to have this in a resource file that the path generator can access and and then set itself up on load all right so there's no there's none of this path generator dot new and all that stuff we can we these underscore display display paths and stuff they can stay in here but we don't want to be doing any of this all right we don't want to be doing this any of this anymore any references to underscore pg need to go in here and we need to start referencing the singleton you're still with me you're still with me stay, stay strong we can do this. Okay, so let's create a resource. And the, the resource itself should be quite easy because I think all we need to do is copy these values here, okay, in terms of what the path generator is going to do. So let's go through that now. Let's let's create a new resource. Um, I think the thing to do might be to create a new script. So let's start with that. We'll click on Create New Script. And this script's going to extend from resource. That's the base class for the resources within the, you know, within the the whole system and you would extend that and add your own variables that need to be added so let's just do that now we'll call this we don't want it we want well, let's put it in the oh no it'll be in scripts won't it but we'll call it something like path i'm going to give it quite a long name path generator config yeah path can generate a config dot gd it's a gd script so that's fine and we'll click on create or should we call it path generator resource? Let's call it path generator config. If you feel that's wrong, then change it. Um, double click it, and then we're going to call it class name here. I do like to give them the same name so it's absolutely clear. Path generator config. And no, I must have stopped there. Uh, click here, control C, control V. And it's control S to save everything. All right. So, what do we just make sure we're in the right ballpark here? Right? We've got map length, map height min path size, mass, max path size. So this is all the stuff that was in main before. 
right and what i'll actually do is i'll start removing this from main and see what breaks <laughs> so we're going to be a little bit of back and forth and I'm, i may just fast forward those little bits there just to clean everything up so that we're not you know sat there watching me clean up the errors um right so we've got this now this is good and we can save that let's create a resource that uses it and this is the idea of the resources is that you can create multiple instances of this perhaps we'll have a separate one that has 32 by 20 has a larger path size a different number of loops and we can save that in a file right. so rather than having a um, you know in the inspector here and in, in the uh, uh, you know as part of the code you can actually have it as a file that you can edit all right so if we go and then save you know so when you come back to it so let's create a new folder called resources click OK and in that resources folder let's add a new resource and it's going to be of type path generator config there as you see so it actually tells well, what type of resource do you want perfect path generator config lovely click on create and we'll call this what do we want to call this we'll call this uh, basic path config how about that basic path config and i like to call it a dot res file because you see it's dot i think tres is for scene right and res is for resource so i like to try and keep the um suffix correct um there we go so i click on res bang right we've got our resource now and if we click if we double click here actually only single click you can see that it's got all of our values here so we could potentially say actually i want the min loop the max loops to be four all right i'll click on that and i think i'm going to press Control S, I think that saves it straight off. Although you can click here and do save as well. All right, so we've got that. This is this is a really good start. Now what we need to do is go back to our path generator and have a reference to that. And we can get rid of some of these as well, look, because we don't need these anymore. All right, so let's just before we do that, let's just create a reference to this. So if I just drag and then I hold control now, click there, preload the resource. It, it does that automatically for me. So let's, let's just have var uh, path config of type was it um hang on, i'll just put a space there of type um path uh, generator config equals preload that all right so we're going to preload and all the all of the details in there now are going to be available in, in our path config and so what i'm going to start doing is is removing oh, the loop count that the grid height and the grid length are um our, our fields that here we go so we don't need this anymore here we don't need these because that's going to be generated well what we could do if you know we can we can certainly do this we can do we can remove that removing it from there and then we can say here path config dot um map length and path config dot map height now Arguably, I think what I'll probably do is is um, remove that altogether and just re make the references to that. So you can see where this is going now, right? And what what we are um, we are using these uh, these this this config here to actually define how it's going to be generated. And now, rather than um, <clears throat> uh, main generating it, what we're going to do is we're going to delete this or at least comment it out with Control K and Control K that as well. This is going to start throwing a lot of errors now, um, but what we can do. Oh, by the way, the, in the uh, preloading, this does get loaded first before everything else, so that's quite good news. Because when this uh, main needs to create its uh, path, then it needs to uh, you know, know that the path generator has done what it's supposed to do. <clears throat> so what I might just do here is now say generate path. Now, one thing I've just seen there, look, for instance, we've got this add loops. So I think in our path generator config, we're going to add another one. Where's the loops? There we go. Let's put that above it, shall we? At export var uh, add loops. Uh, type bool equals, let's say false by default. Okay, sort of wobbling around there, right? Now, if I go back to my basic path.config here, Let's turn it to on by default there, okay? And then we'll say generate path brackets path config dot what was it? Um, add loops. Good. And then generate path will run. Uh, I think identify grid length. Yes, yeah, so we've got rid of that. Okay, so what we'll have to do then? I'm going to go through now. I'll, I'll probably fast forward this bit and just do a bit of tidy up on this bit. So sit tight. <laughs>
Okay, so we, I believe we've completed everything we need to do in the path generator now, replacing uh, all of those pieces in there. Um, so let's go have a look at main.gd now. Main.gd is going to have a huge problem now because we've got all of these underscore PG. So what I'll do now is go through here and put a reference to the singleton instead. So let's do that. <laughs> Holy moly, I think we're there. I think we're there. I think that's actually completed it. That wasn't too bad. I, I, I feared the worst. Now, look, interestingly, there are no loops here. So I need to have a quick look at why that's happening. A few moments later. Well, I know the reason why it's happening. It's because we're not actually checking uh, any of the mac, min, max, and loop counts. I've just realized that. So let's, let's adjust the code now so that we've got the uh, same check that the main function did earlier on. Let's, let's put that. Let's look at this one. What a, what a confusing state that one would be. It's cool though, right? Uh, yeah, so let's update the code so that it actually does the checks to see that it's the min, max is all, or all within tolerance. Eventually. Right, I think we're there. I think we're there. That took a while. Um, this 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 um, resource here. I think you do have to click save here uh, before you um, proceed. Because I, I was. Uh, let's just change these around a bit now. So let's make that to uh, two and five or something like that. I was playing around. and I realised it, it got to a stage where it couldn't actually generate the map with the, within the parameters. I, I think. See, you can see here. This it can't actually find them half the time. Thirty and sixty. I feel like. I feel like I need to give us a little bit more of a look because that should be working. 30 and 70. Let's do 20 and 70, shall we? And then do save. I mean, that should be fine. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll tweak those values. I think the problem is with these things here. And one thing I'm thinking as well is you need to be a little bit careful with the add loops on. Then if the add loops is off, then the min loops has to be zero, otherwise it's never going to work. <laughs> or we need to think about this this count here, uh, the way that it's doing the loop count. So that's something to, to think about. But there we go. We've actually generated a rather cool uh, um, uh, preload now that we can use in our uh, with our enemies that can now reference this path here uh, directly. They haven't got to do anything anything at all, uh, other than just say where do I need to be. So how cool is that? All right, so I think we're done on this bit. I think we're done for now. So until next time, folks, I'm going to wish, wish you adieu. In the next episode, we will actually be looking at moving these aliens, creating an alien wave. Uh, so that should be a lot easier to do now that we've um, uh, created this, uh, this uh, singleton class uh, and that the main does not use it anymore. But right, we can start tidying these up here uh, and remove them. Okay, so that we can, I'll clean all this up and then I'll check this in so that you can use this. You can check the um, the, uh, the GitHub repository and uh, go over there and download the code and have a play. Next episode will be very, very soon. It's going to be all about generating the aliens and the alien wave. So look forward to that. And I look forward to seeing you all very soon. Thanks again for tuning in. Until next time. Bye-bye.